And now we're going to turn to David, uh, uh, David Bros, who has. Uh, you're wor- working here on Wall Street, and right, how did right you? Here on Wall Street. Fa- how did you find the uh, storytelling workshop? How did and how, why did you want to share your story? Did you come across the interesting background first, or did you discover it after you'd begun telling the story? Well, I, how did I find the workshop? I, I don't know which came first, the, either the workshop or or the the show, Two Men Talking. Um, and I think I bumped into you on the subway one day, and you mentioned <laughs> the show, Mary, to me. And um, one thing led to the next, and I I knew I had a story to tell. It was bursting. Yeah. Out. I wanted to tell it. I yeah. needed to tell it. And when I learned of the storytelling workshop, I decided, well, this, this might be a good good opportunity just for me to connect with my own story. To unload the story, to unload it even to yourself, you mean. You had Very only much. thought it, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, shall we hear it? Sure, sure. I uh, I was born uh, during the summer of love. Um, I guess it was the height of the Vietnam War as well, so I was lucky to be born at all because a couple of years before, my father um, had difficulty finding a job, so he enlisted in the Army. And he was very fortunate. Rather than being sent to uh, to fight in Vietnam, he was sent to Korea. And there he met my mother. Um, they married, and my mother, uh, who grew up in Korea, uh, moved back to the United States. My father is of Puerto Rican descent, um, and uh, my mother left Korea, I guess she was in her mid-30s when that happened. I grew up uh, out in Long Island in a suburb where every other house looks the same, and I was only one of... Um, a handful of Asian-looking students in the school I attended. So from an early age, I sensed I was different. I was both Puerto Rican and Korean. I was actually, in one, in another sense, neither Puerto Rican or Korean. Um, and it was, uh, it was a challenging. There was no positive uh, affirmation for my heritage. It, it certainly was the subject of a lot of teasing. And, I, you know, I hadn't realized until tonight what kind of, or today, what kind of effect that, that had on me. I remember asking my, my father uh, while I was in school if I could get an operation in order to change uh, the appearance of my eyes so I could fit in. Oh um, I graduated from Princeton University and had high hopes and um, uh, was excited about life. But within nine months, my mother was stricken with cancer a second time, and she passed away. Eighteen months later, my father died of cancer. I was 25 years old. There was only a grandmother and my sister left. I knew very little about my mother's side of the family. I had met one of her younger brothers. I had met her two sisters uh, while my mother was in the hospital. Two sisters stayed for for a couple months. There was a language barrier. I didn't speak Korean. They didn't speak uh, English. But with hand singles and uh, uh, just doing things together, I got a a, a sense of their warmth. Um, The closeness that they shared with my mother rubbed off on me. After the funeral, they left, and the phone was useless. because of the language barrier, they tried calling a couple times, but we couldn't really communicate. And as time went by, you know, I, I became preoccupied with the ups and downs of my own career. I moved from apartment to apartment in New York, which is not an unusual uh, circumstance. Um, and I lost touch with my, my, my relatives in Korea. Twelve years went by. I felt very alone in the world. And I managed to reconnect that's a whole other story in itself. But I reconnected with the help of a cousin who, as it turns out, could speak, read, and write Korean, lived in the States for six years, was my age, earned an MBA from Georgetown. This was a possibility I could not have imagined. I, I, I was overjoyed. I, to, I told all my friends that this is extraordinary. It was a great discovery. Within the year, I uh, visited my family in Korea. I flew to Seoul. I stayed with three of the of, of four families of relatives there. I'm at brunch one day, uh, and uh, the the widow of my eldest uncle pulls out two books, and they are family genealogies. One of them goes back 13 generations. The other one goes back 30. 
And I had no idea. I had no idea that this existed. I, I had so many questions about about my family, which I could only imagine the answers to. I remember looking at photographs, black and white photographs of my mother and wondering about her life before coming to Korea. So then my uncle opens up a page and shows me where my mother's name is in the book. And then he shows me where my name is in the book. And I just almost fell off my chair. Um, uh, it occurred to me, it, in one sense, you know, I might have lost contact with these, these relatives but in, in another sense, they never really lost contact with me. The next day, we visited um, a town called Seonju, way down south, in one of the few places in the peninsula that, that wasn't affected by, by war during the Korean War. And that's the town my mother came from. We visited a grave site. My, my uncle sprinkled soju wine on the grave and some food. Uh, some Westerners refer to this as ancestor worship. And... I prayed silently while tears streamed down my face, and it was a great surprise. There were the graves of my, my grandparents, great-grandparents, great-granduncles. I had no idea that, that there was a, all these ancestors were there. And then we, uh, we, we visited um, this what turned out to be an ancestral shrine, and I, I just had no idea. It was another surprise. The doors opened. There was a p portrait of an old of an old ancestor uh, flanked by candles. My uncle says to me, you, you bow twice now. To bow twice in Korean is, is a sign of respect to an elder ancestor. It was only at that point that I realized that uh, I, I was in my own ancestral shrine. This ancestor goes back to the 1590s. <laughs> David Bros. Th these are extremely core stories, are they mm. not, Murray and yeah. Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Each one of them has to do with facing the truth about yourself. Mm -hmm. I was just sort of thinking, listening to them. Each one of our storytellers is finding out something about who they are and where who they are, where they come from, you know, and and and, and grappling with what their identity is. Right. Uh, in the world, and and you know, just in these, and you can you get the sense from each one of these stories that each one of the storytellers could have gone on and yes. on, and we would yes. have been happy to yes. listen to them for another hour. 